Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And let me take this opportunity to welcome you to the daily police press briefing for Monday, 4th of June 2012. With me is ASP, our Chief Public Information Officer of the Trinidad Tobago Police Service. I will now proceed to give you some information. Possession of arms and ammunition in the St. Joseph District. Around 10, 15 p.m. on Friday, 1st of June 2012, Corporal Garcia in company with Police Constable McQueen of the St. Joseph CID, as a result of information received, proceeded to the Eric Williams Medical Complex where they met two security officers employed with the institution, who took them to the car park located on the northeastern side of the hospital. On arrival, the police officers observed a dark blue Honda Accord registration with what appeared to be a bullet holes in the left rear glass window, right rear door glass window, right fender and rear windscreen smashed and what appeared to be blood on the interior of the said vehicle. The police officers carried out a search on the vehicle and upon opening the right door, observed two metal objects resembling that of firearms on the flooring of the right front seat of the vehicle. Further checks revealed that they were both, both .382 Bursa Thunder pistols with two magazines and 11 live rounds of .380 ammunition. Also, one spent .380 Zero shell was also discovered on the back of the dashboard. A CSI team was called in and they took possession of the firearms and ammunition. The police officers conducted further inquiries where it was discovered that two men ages 31 and 36 of Movan were receiving medical attention at the said institution as a result of gunshot wounds. Both men are presently assisting police on inquiries. And in the Maracas Bay Police District, Around 12.30 a.m. today, officers of the Maracas Bay Police Station responded to a report of shooting at the bar in Maracas Bay. On arrival of the scene, police officers found Brent Kwamana, aged 25 years of Rich Plain, Digo Martin, with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head. He was conveyed to the Port of Spain Hospital, where he is now receiving medical attention and is said to be in a critical condition. Shortly thereafter, around 12.40 a.m., the police again responded to another report of shooting on the North Coast Road near Bayview Restaurant. On arrival, the officers observed a B-14 motor vehicle parked on the roadway. A wrecker was contacted and the vehicle was towed onto the roadway. Officers then observed the body of a female who appeared to be in her late 20s, sitting in the front passenger seat with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the body. Information received is that the driver of the vehicle reported to be one Adrian Francois, who was also shot, believed to be a friend of the deceased. He was conveyed by passers-by to the Port of Spain General Hospital and is presently being medically examined. The DMO, Dr. Ram Kelawan, visited the scene and ordered the removal of the body. Investigations are continuing. Identification of the deceased is Nesta Awai, age 26, of Dillon Street, Digo Martin. And finally, a homicide in the Sangha Grande district. The facts are, around 1 to 3 a.m. today, residents of Sahardin Street Extension Number 2, Sangha Grande, were alerted by loud explosions in the area. And around 6 a.m. today, another resident, whilst walking through a truck of the said road, discovered the body of a man. A report was made to the Sangagrani Police Station, and police officers of the Sangagrani Police Station visited the scene where they observed the body of the deceased, Adrian Batiste, age 27, a mechanic of light pole number three Sahardine extension, Sangagrani, with what appeared to be gunshot wounds about the body. Police officers are presently on the, on the scene and investigations are continuing. And that is the end of this morning's news brief. We will now move to the section where we invite members of the media to ask questions. Morning. Well, firstly, let me say, you know, it's a great concern of us, members of the Trinidad Tobago Police Service. We are greatly concerned uh, as it relates to the, the homicide rate. Secondly, let me praise all the police officers who are working 24-7 to ensure that perpetrators are brought to justice using all that is in their resources. And we want to promise the public that we are doing all in our power to ensure that perpetrators are brought to justice. We again ask together with our intelligence unit, members of the public, we are pleading with them, if you may have any information that would lead to the arrest of some of these perpetrators, you can use our 555 system and give the information. Remember that's, that system is it's anonymous, it's, 
it's safe, you can call in, give your information. And as it relates to initiative, um, what I want to do is just echo the sentiments of the commissioner who indicated that, you know, one of the ways that we'll be going, and as I said, not letting too much of the bag, but in the way of CCTV cameras, which will assist us greatly in our detection rate. Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I communicated with the Crime Stoppers Unit um, not too long ago, and they indicated, indicated to me that there has been a rise in detections thus far as a result of information coming towards them. So the system is working, and I want to alert the public and you know, make the public aware that the system is a safe system. All we need is your information. We do not need anything else. We don't require your name or your address, and the system is very safe. So. Again, we ask the members of the public to come forward. Your information is vital to us, your cooperation, and the teamwork with members of the public is vital. Well, you know, in our 21st century policing, one of the aspects is the, the whole um, deployment system, which we have officers strategically deployed in you know, some of the areas which we call so-called hotspot areas, based on our ComStat information, officers will be deployed strategically to suppress some of these, um, these criminal activities. So, coupled with the information from the public, which will assist us greatly in our detection rate, and we combine everything together, the public plus the police service working together, we will be able to ensure that crime is maintain in a respectable manner. What I can tell you is that there, there has been an increase in our detection rate as it relates to narcotic offenses at our um, airports. We are working closely with our regional counterparts and our local authorities, the customs, the airport authority security. Um, you know, in local terms, we have a nice thing going and we want to keep that going on in a particular manner where we continue to have high detection rates at our airports. Thanks a lot. Um, firstly, why are we having press with the police barracks as opposed to the police administration? And my question is why not? Change of venue. Well, generally, we, all the members of the public affairs team, we are presently on a, a, a three day workshop at the police academy. And we saw it fit that we you know we are done here already. So we decided that we'll transfer everything to the academy. And this will be done for the next three days, Mr. Johnson, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. We if value okay your you. presence as the media. So we, as we change venue, we invited you here as well. So you are valuable to us. Well, actually, um, the police service, the TTPS, in keeping with the 21st century, policing strategy as well, and making the organization a more competent, caring, and committed organization. We continue on an ongoing basis to train our officers and prepare them for the role as senior officers and supervisors, and also so that they can be available to you within the divisions to share information with you, the media, as we are aware how important the role of the media is in law enforcement. So we are training all our officers to be readily available to you in the divisions in the event you don't get on to us. Well, as, as, as we said, uh, it's keeping with making the organization more professional, more competent, caring, and committed. And why not now? It, it, what, we, what we are seeking to do is to ensure that when information is needed within the divisions, it is accurate 
and on time so that we are training our officers to have a, a more professional discourse with you, the members of the media. Ideally, we are working on that, so we, you will hear from us on that account. And who's the facilitator of this training? Well, the training is, um, is conducted by the Public Affairs Unit of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, and the director is Ms. Sharon Lee Asang. So she's your personal spearheading and training and teaching? No, she's not. We will have the, the, uh, the facilitator have an interview with you shortly. Well, we, so far today we have eight officers present and we expect more. Some of them are away on police duties uh, who are attending court, but by tomorrow we should have everybody here. And should have everybody be how many people? From each police division of the nine police division. Well, we have considered that, and uh, we have the organization considered succession planning, and uh, as I said, the training will be ongoing. Today we have this group of officers. It will be ongoing. We'll take one more question. Well, I am not sure that they are kings because I thought I was quite clear with what I would have um, communicated to you on the last occasion. And that was that the matter has been closed pending any further development. And, and that's the last of it. As far as I understand, it's supposed to be, supposed to be today, if I'm not mistaken. Again, to add it out, quote unquote, kings, and so in the, um, in the whole information that's been coming forth. What if anything at all is the TPPS to ensure that the information that is coming out there will be, will be accurate and not um, requested as it is now? I am not sure of what your question, but I wouldn't want to comment further on that matter. As you rightly said, it's engaging the attention of the PA, the Public Service, Police Service Association, okay. Police Service Commission, I'm sorry. So I wouldn't want to comment further on that issue. However, as I mentioned before, the organization will continue to train its officers and ensure that the information that we give out there is accurate and on time. And so far, the information that I have disclosed is accurate. I may say, Mr. Johnson, that the Public Affairs Unit, as we mentioned before, is the official source of your information. So if you want to get official information, the daily press briefings has been designed each day to give you official information. Final two questions. Two parts, okay. Well, <clears throat> I will most definitely answer your first question. So we leave the last one out of this. Um, basically, last week I was selected to go to London on a one-week training program. It was entitled "Crisis Communication in Government," and basically that course is geared on the government's ability to communicate professionally with members of the public during any kind of crisis. So you'll, you'll, we will not, um, the government will not be sending any mixed messages. So that course was geared along that line. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.